DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Evening and welcome. This is our new academically improved show with Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. How how is it improved? Um, 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 I, I never got that far. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I, I I never got that far. I mean, I just I figured if we say it, it becomes. You know, if, if we build it, they will. I was watching Field of Dreams. If we build it, they will come. If we say it, it'll happen. No, not so much. Dang it. Ben two point oh. Ben two point new and improved. And that's now, what, is it new or is it improved? Or is it just awesome all the way around? It could be. Yes. So yeah, what right. we're going to do tonight is we're going to be talking about ways to make that microphone sound a little bit better. We're going to get into the topic right away. We're going to get through that and, and give you guys who wants us to get there. We're going to do that. And then we're going to talk about Ben's week last week in the last half of the show because he had kind of a busy week last week. I mean, he had to do this and that and the other thing. Oh, we'll talk about that in the second half. So Ben, you mentioned a few weeks back the idea that that... DJ boards, which typically sitting over here, the mic, mm -hmm. the mic input on those is lacking if you are a true sound professional who does large concert sounds. So first off, why, why is that the case? Why don't they put, why aren't there better mic inputs and mic preamps in those things? That's not a question I can answer. I, I that I don't know. I, I mean, is there, I, I guess maybe my question is, is, is there a huge price variation? I mean, is that one of those areas that it gets really expensive really quickly to get? I mean, yes and no, okay. not really, because there's inexpensive analog mixers out there that have better mic preamps. I, I, I have to believe, and this is without any direct conversation to support this, but I have to believe on some level, it's almost a intentional thing. You know, maybe the mic preamps are super hot because, you know, DJs are using it as a hype mic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but you just don't really find any any controls on a DJ controller mic preamp or channel that you do on a live soundboard. And and I, I, I agree, it's very lacking. I think that's um, not only are the preamps not all that great, uh, they tend to be hot uh, and you tend to be missing what I feel are some uh, critical controls. Now, when you when you say they're hot, what are you meaning by that? So when I listen to it, am I sounding, are different frequencies coming through more than others or what? Well, um, all the frequencies are coming through more than others. Certainly when we talk about heat, you know, we're talking about the amplitude, how much signal is coming through. Uh, if we talk about different frequencies coming through, then we'd be talking about maybe the color of the preamp. Okay. This preamp is colored a little different. It's a little warmer or whatever, you know, but these just tend to be really loud for lack of better words and and so you distort you know or clip those preamps really fast djs struggle with that they say man i just you know no matter what i do this preamp sounds uh distorted and and, and bad and uh you know i've got it turned all the way down uh and and that shouldn't necessarily be the case uh every preamp has kind of a sweet spot in it and you, you don't want to be all the way to either the bottom or the top so now I haven't done an exhaustive uh, sampling of every DJ preamp myself, and I haven't uh, I haven't tried them. This is just something I've heard overwhelmingly. Yeah, uh, as have and, I. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very it's very plain. Some DJs are uh, getting microphone pads, which are little XLR connectors you insert that have uh, like an H shaped resistor circuit inside, uh, or there's different technology. That's the one I prefer uh, to reduce that mic signal and uh, try to pad that down for the preamp. Uh, apparently, there's a firmware update for the MC8000 that that uh, improves things a little bit. 
um, or a software uh, change in there. But overall, I, I don't know. Like I said, it seems to be very consistent that preamps on DJ mixers are a real challenge, uh, uh, especially if you're trying to do something like a ceremony, you know, or somewhere where you actually want some live sound control of a microphone. Sure. You know, maybe you're using DJ controller for the uh, reception, but you've also got a best man making a toast, you know, and uh, suddenly you have to make a microphone sound good. And and that's, of course, what we're going to be looking at doing and how we would do that. But in that situation, if I had my microphone, say, through my controller um, mm -hmm. microphone input, and then I, I ran with our solution, one of the options we're going to do show tonight, would I be able to tell a difference in the sound quality? Same microphones just running through two different boards like that. I guarantee it. Oh, wow. Especially, oh, I, I guarantee Very seldom it. do I get a high guarantee something on it. Can you guys write this down at this particular moment? This wasn't, a, me, it depends. Let me tell you this, John. This was an I guarantee it moment. Let me tell you this. Uh, if you use a small live sound console like we're going to talk about, and you do it even remotely correctly, and you can't hear a difference, you should never be a sound guy. It's just not in your future, okay? <laughs> in I mean, this, this does not take a studio ear uh, to notice an immediate difference. <laughs> so that's, there's, our, there's our litmus test for all the viewers who want to know, is, is being a sound guy in my future, try this. If you can't hear any difference, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, this is you could be a great DJ, though, you know, and, and that's something I'll never be. So, you know, okay. I, was a I was a mediocre DJ, but, you know. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get to questions and such. If you guys have questions, uh, please hang on to those until uh, we kind of get through the first part of it. Then we'll be digging into questions and such on all of the things. And I'm not going to be able to get back up into the chat because I'm sure I'll miss them. So hang on to your questions and such until we get to uh, kind of after we've gone through what uh, the solution is for our preamp problem. So where do we go? Yeah, I kind of gave it away. It's not It's not even that big of a secret. I mean, I wish, I wish there was some... Uh, you know, unholy union between DJ controllers and live sound boards that would birth a better board that could do both more effectively. Uh, I keep thinking, you know, you leave the trade show floor at night at, and like something like Mobile Beat Vegas, maybe we'll come back and, you know, <laughs> the next, the next year there'll be these, you know, the live sound boards and the DJ boards were mixing it up a little bit. And the next thing you know, you know, and how would you uh, explain it that seem to, to work the kids? that way? I don't know. It so you see, kids, when the lights go down and a soundboard likes a controller board, I, I, this the, is not going to go. Nine well. months later, a stork brings you a hybrid mixer that can do both. Uh, you know. So you people are learning so much tonight. I'm so excited. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I just don't understand it. Uh, and and somebody can maybe educate me from a marketability standpoint and why it's a bad idea. All I know is from a sound person's perspective, it's very difficult to use those mic preamps on a DJ controller. First of all, just even as a basic microphone, but second of all, to do anything resembling, uh, you know, what we would call live sound work, which could be as simple as a toast mic or an officiant's mic or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, golly, it's, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm spoiled. I, I, I've, I've been using good preamps um, and, and I know how to make a mic sound better and, you know, you put me on a DJ controller, not only uh, are there limitations with the mic, there's real limitations with uh, the, the the rest of it in terms of output control, EQ of the system, and all of those things can be addressed by the solutions that we're going to talk about. Well, let's dig into those. What kind of solutions do you have? All ours? right. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's not even like a great big reveal or something <laughs> crazy, and it's something many DJs are already doing. Simply put, since we don't have an all-in-one solution where a live soundboard meets a DJ controller and falls in love and, you know, that doesn't happen, uh, we're just going to have to use both. I mean, and uh, it's a little less convenient, but it sure sounds a lot better. And so I brought three uh, examples. Nice. And they're not by any means all of the examples. And I'm trying to decide what order I want to do this in. I think, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it in this order. Uh, I think first and foremost, we'll talk about this one. It's it's a box, basically. Okay. Uh, and I put in you this on box, full screen there so people can see it a little bit better. Yep. Let's see. I'm trying not to hit my microphone right in front of me here. So in this box, I've got eight mic preamps, and these are combo jacks here, XLR and quarter inch. Mm -hmm. So line mic combo jacks, but I have eight mic preamps. I have balanced outputs right here, master outputs. 
And I have some balanced aux outputs too, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is basically a little live sound mixer in a box. Uh, and what I want to do, actually, John, is I'm going to I'm going to show you because there isn't a lot um, there isn't a lot that you can look at on the front here. And you say, okay, well, what does that do for me? So let's take a look uh, at at a sample of what the uh, software might look like here. Nice. And because uh, this is something you run uh, via software uh, from an iPad or a tablet or a computer. And let's see, uh, do you see that on your screen? Yes, we do. Yep, we see the sliders and such. Okay, so uh, what we see here, uh, and now this is, uh, this is just, uh, you know, set up like we've got acoustic guitar and lead vocal and background vocals, and it's kind of a sample show that we're running here, uh, but sort of figure out, you know, whatever you want. So let's just go to lead vocal, and uh, let's go to our EQ edit here. Oh, and by the way, this is just, just for fun. Uh, check this out. Uh, we've got a, a, an effects rack here. So if we had a vocalist who was singing and we wanted to put a little reverb on them, we could do that. We've got some verb there we could put on that vocalist and just, you know, thicken up those vocals and make it sound good. Mm -hmm. uh, but never mind that. Let's just talk about EQ for a second. So first and most critical thing, I'm actually going to make a T-shirt that says high pass everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, honestly, uh, first and most critical thing for vocals, I got this high pass filter. And uh, on a female vocalist, uh, I might push this thing way up here, you know, up in the 140s. Get rid of anything that I'm not using. Sure. Uh, but even on a, a deep male vocalist, come on, come back here. Uh, I might push this thing down to 80, 90. That would be about the lowest I'd go. Uh, but here we also have these, um, these other EQ filters. So, gosh darn it. <laughs> Sorry, it's not letting me click what I want here. So let's say I want to pull out a little, uh, I got a little mud here, you know, uh, in the in the high 200s or something. I could drop some of that out. Maybe I need a little more, you know, presence up here. Boy, this thing's really sensitive. I think it's angry about me uh, trying to do this while I'm sharing the screen. So bear with me here. I'm sorry. Or it's not liking the whole idea of, of mating with a controller. That could, I've offended the live sound you consoles everywhere. Offended. Man, I sure hope not. I got some tour shows this uh, weekend. <laughs> Another thing here we've got, we can see it. We've got a de circuit here. So, you know, we could take that de circuit and get rid of some of the, the hissy snakes in there. Um, but we also have dynamics. So, I mean, first and foremost, we could just stop here. You know, the number one thing that's going to make a mic sound good is a good preamp and then the ability to EQ it. Sure. Uh, I mean, we could honestly, we could just stop there and we're, we're way ahead. Um, and this is available on all eight of those mic preamps, but we also have dynamics. So we have uh, compressor and gate, so we can choose, you know, our, our compression threshold. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, it didn't do this before I connected to zoom, by the way. So, uh, yep. uh, our, our ratio here, we've got kind of a soft knee. We can make that a hard knee. Now we're basically looking at a limiter circuit here, you know, but we have this ability to, uh, you know, put in a, a vocal, uh, compressor. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we talked about the effects and that sort of thing. And we also have aux sends, uh, which, uh, you know, I guess we could just jump right into those real quick and say that this is basically a mixer within a mixer. Mm -hmm. And so you'd say, well, what in the world would I want an aux mix for? Uh, okay, well, let's say, uh, for example, you've got an acoustic guitar player in the building playing and singing as part of the reception. They're going to do a little thing before you DJ, or maybe, you know, you're going to take a break and they're going to do something special. Uh, and, and that acoustic guitar, you're going to hear coming from the acoustic guitar. So maybe you don't really need to put a lot of that in your mix. Uh, but maybe we would use this aux send to, uh, to send a mix to the videographer. I mean, we are the sound guy after all, that's our job, right? Yeah. To mix sound and provide those signals. So, you know, we're going to send a good, uh, full mix to the videographer. So they're getting some of that guitar, even though we're not putting it through our mains, or maybe we're going to give a monitor to the, uh, the person who is playing. And so, you know, they would want to hear a little bit, maybe, uh, you know, more of their vocals in their monitor mix or something. Uh, or maybe we have some remote speakers, or maybe we have all three, you know, depending on the mixer you use, you could have many aux buses. Sure. And so we can create all these separate sub mixes different from what we're hearing through the mains. You know, we could do a, a mix for remote speakers. We could do a mix for a monitor. We could do a mix for a videographer. Uh, there's lots of scenarios where we might use an aux send. And that gives us the ability to control you know, how much of the lead vocal is going into aux one and two here. 
uh, versus aux three and four. They're chained together right now as stereo auxes, uh, which is something else we can do. We could uh, we can pan this, and that's a little bit more of a live sound trick. Sure, but you know we'll pan signals. You know left, right. Maybe I'll pan uh, you know bass one way and acoustic guitar the other way just a little bit to kind of create some space in the mix and that sort of thing. Anyway, point being, we've got some really advanced features in this very simple box. But even if you got rid of all those and you just came back and said, you know what? I just, I just want to be able to fix my EQ a little bit. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. So, so much more better. Uh, that's all I'm, I think I'm going to spend on this real quick. Uh, but I'll, I'll show some other examples here real quick. So let me stop the screen share. Anyway, that all lives inside that box. And uh, you just connect to it via computer, uh, you know, with Wi-Fi or a tablet or an iPhone. Uh, and uh, off you go. Uh, so once you make the settings on the, say you're using your tablet to run it and you make your settings changes, what have you, then you shut your tablet off. Are the settings saved in the box then? or Yeah, it remembers. Just, you know, I mean, that would be in case a tablet got accidentally disconnected or that sort of thing. You know, sometimes you don't have to be real active on your mix. Uh, so yeah, they're going to live in there. Uh, I'm fond of saying though that the settings change for a reason. So I don't think there's a set it and forget it. Uh, if you were to do something as a set it and forget it, it would be put that high pass around 100 and uh, maybe knock out a little of 250. I'd just be, you just did those things and, and you know, left, you'd be way better off. But a good preamp and the ability to adjust that gain level. Plus, of course, what we saw in here is there's eight preamps. You have the ability to connect eight microphones. Mm -hmm. No DJ controller in the world does that. Um, not that I've ever seen. Um Here's another example, different form factor, more uh, kind of familiar buttons and knobs. Uh, I tell you what, for a little cheap mixer, this thing is beefy and I like it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, and it, this is the uh, Personas AR8, um, available from your favorite Animal Effects rep. Uh, but this does a couple of cool things. Here we have our, our mic preamps again. We have gain controls for those preamps. All right, we've got a low cut button, so we don't have a selectable low cut, uh, but we can at least engage a low cut and it's fixed at probably, you know, 100 or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to send and receive USB from here, but that's I mean, this thing does so many cool things. Built in recorder, SD card. You can also play from that SD card. Very cool. We have a little uh, three band EQ down here. So, you know, again, uh, better than nothing for sure. And then we've got an aux send as well. Uh, you know, and this one has the ability to, to send to the effects bus and send to one aux bus um, and a couple of other cool things. Phantom power, if you're running condenser microphones, that's another thing. If you want to use condensers, uh, DJ controllers uh, don't have phantom power on them. Has some built-in effects. So if you want a little bit of that reverb or something, that's built in here for you as well. Mute buttons are your friend. They're oh, in here. Yes. That's kind of nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and one uh, cool feature of this, well, a couple of cool features, but uh, this has built-in Bluetooth on it, so you could play right to it from a Bluetooth device. Uh, you can uh, uh, play from the SD card or a USB, which is really nice. But maybe my favorite feature is the, of this board is it allows for multi-track recording. Ah. So I can actually go in and record each of these preamps separately uh, just by connecting it with a USB connection here to my computer. So... You know, imagine if you will, you've got the, uh, you know, the, the, the vows or the, the speeches and you've got that, that person remember playing the guitar yep. and we have these multi-track recordings that we can uh, store uh, for mic preamps and a main left, right mix. So you could go back and, you know, as they say, fix it and post, Yeah. but you could send that to the videographer. You could send it to a, a you know, a studio person or you could do it yourself uh, and, and, provide a uh, more professionally produced mixed down version, the permanent record, as it were, of the performance that person gave at the event. So to me, that's a, that's just a cool bonus, by the way, you get it, you know, basically for free. Um, all we really are trying to accomplish here is a better preamp and all these other good things come with it. So, so that, let's kind of touch base on, because this is, this board looks more like a board we'd traditionally be comfortable with or, or we, we've seen before where the other one was more software uh, related. Well, you're dating us when you say that, John, you're I right. Am. You and I would probably be more comfortable with that. But I think the younger generation is increasingly comfortable interfacing with these devices with uh, iPads and, and phones. And, uh, and, and I'm learning. It, it sure is nice, particularly for things like ringing out monitors and stuff where you can just walk up there with the iPad 
instead of having to go back and forth to the console. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it is a little more traditional. Sure. sure. You know. So so the and the question is leads me to is is now how would we connect our traditional DJ controller has two XLRs coming out that would be the main and that way we would run to speakers. How would we incorporate those types of, of mixing devices into that? Would that be ahead or behind, or how would the things all go together and then out to our speakers? Well, I'm so glad you asked because uh, literally sitting here uh, about 20 minutes before the show started, I'm uh, shoving pork chops in my mouth uh, one hand and uh, drawing this in the other hand ah. uh, with apologies to my wife's amazing cooking. But uh, I'll tell you what, it, it, this today was I was on the run from the minute I woke up. It was unbelievable. And I just felt like the, the more I did, the further behind I got. Uh, you know, at one point I had well over 100 messages to respond to. Uh, and I felt bad, you know, for making everybody wait, but it was just, it's great that, you know, there was a lot of opportunity there, uh, you know, to help people, but just, uh, anyway, just did, did what I could to pound through those. And then I stopped by, uh, an arena on the way home and, uh, uh, had, had intended to help, uh, fly out a video wall real quick, real quick, mind you. And when I got there, there were eight points to pull. So I borrowed a harness cause I didn't have mine with me. I didn't, hadn't intended to climb the steel and uh, uh, borrowed a harness and climbed into the steel and pulled eight points. <laughs> and then I got home a little after seven and uh, uh, took some uh, cold, uh, cold dinner and, and started working on this. So I'm so glad you asked because uh, I slaved over a cold keyboard here to do this. Uh, let's take a look uh, at another shared screen, if you will. And uh, let's do this. You got it? Yes, I do. Let's All right. So... Well, this is what 30 seconds of drawing will get you. And here's one example, and I'm going to give you three, uh, where we can see uh, a typical DJ controller. This is the Denon DNMC 6000 MK2. And uh, because the distance is very, very short, we could go with an unbalanced cable here. Uh, so, uh, you know, balanced is always better, but we'll talk about that in a second. Here we could very easily go with an unbalanced cable uh, from the master out into a line in on this mixer. Here again, we can see our aux buses. Here we can see two of our mic preamps being used. And there we can see our main outs to the mixers. So the connectivity is really simple. And this thing can live down in a rack somewhere, you know, or uh, something like that, because we don't really need to get to it other than to connect to it. Uh, all of our control is essentially done from the iPad or computer. Sure. In fact, you know, you could you could connect to it kind of in the background uh, of, of the computer you're running, uh, you know, virtual DJ or what on. and and uh, make some tweaks if you need to once in a while. It's not something you really need to, uh, you know, to mother hen here, you know? Wow, okay. I was, that was one of my questions, is if we need to have a separate computer to uh, run that, if you would decide to go with the computer route. No, I don't, th I mean, you know, I'm always a fan of separate things when possible, but no, I really don't think so, because there isn't a lot we have to do here. You know, most of the stuff we're going to adjust is going to happen, um, you know, prior to the gig. So uh, now that, that again, depends on what we're doing. If you're mixing a live band, well, you're going to be uh, expected that you're going to be on this thing, you know, pretty regular, but then you're probably not on your controller, you know? Sure. So uh, that's one such example. Uh, let's see if this works. Maybe. No, no, I'm hearing lots of beep. Hey, let's go. Let's do one more. There we go. Come on, computer. There it is. All right. We'll go back to that one. Yep. So here's another example where I've come out of the balanced outputs into these balanced inputs. Now, the thing I want to point out here is these are line level outputs coming out of the controller going into mic preamps. Okay. So proceed with caution. You know, you're going to overdrive those preamps pretty fast. Uh, you could do this with some careful level management. And depending on your mixer, it may have the ability to connect a line signal. Uh, I just wanted to point out that there is a difference here between uh, line and, and mic. Uh, but that's an example of how you could do this with XLRs, uh, just minding your levels very carefully. Uh, again, no real harm. Are we still on? Uh, can you still see me, John? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've, you and I are on the top here. So. All right. Well, you know, no harm in just using a basic uh, RCA cable uh, for that short of a distance. You know, you're only going a couple feet. No big deal. So which um, one would you recommend in this particular configuration? Because it, if you were pushing hard, you could overdrive that mic preamp. So really the... The RCA connection might be a more safe connection in this configuration. Yeah, I think so. It's pretty tough to uh, pretty tough to screw that up, you know. Uh, and uh, then you keeps your mic preamps open too. You don't have to worry about you know stereo channels and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, 
here's another example. Let's go up to our uh, other mixer here. And here you can see this mixer has uh, quarter inch inputs that are designed for stereo lines. So one fader runs stereo line in. Okay, so there we could use a cable like this where we've got uh, RCA to quarter inch. Sure. Piece of cake. Uh, you know, there's another little three footer there. Nice plug for pig hog there. <laughs> also available at your favorite NLFX uh, dealer. Um, anyway, uh, just pop those right in here. Again, we've got mic preamps. Uh, this is the AR12, which is a little bigger than the AR8. Sure. Uh, but functionally the same. We saw the AR8 a second ago. Uh, in fact, if we look, if we notice here, we also have RCAs. Ooh. So we still have RCAs available to us if we wanted to go to RCA, RCA. That's, I kind of wanted to show all three options where yeah. you could go RCA to RCA, RCA to quarter inch, uh, you know, uh, whatever, quarter inch to quarter inch if your uh, controller has that out, um, you know, has, has that output option, XLR to XLR. Um, and we see the uh, SD card recorder here. We see our aux buses, um, you know, and that, uh, you know, our main bus output effects rack down here and the ability to bring a couple mics in. And one of the things that's really critically important here is that we have the ability to EQ different mics differently, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is is really important. Big one, yeah. The other thing is uh, that's uh, maybe a real critical thing that we have on the, the UI is we have the ability to uh, EQ the, the main output a little bit too. So we have some room EQ. And we've talked in the past about things like feedback elimination. And I think people's brains nearly splattered all over the wall when I did my seminar in Vegas and I had a microphone literally one foot away from the speaker. speaker yep, I saw that. Yeah, well, and halfway through the seminar, I pointed out that it was on. <laughs> it had been on the whole time. And people said, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? And you know, they went up and tapped on it and listened to it. And you know, I said, hey, this feedback elimination isn't really magic at all. It's just, uh, it's just takes a little bit of physics. And, and honestly, it took me about three minutes. Uh, I don't think it even took me that long. Um, and, and the problem if we do EQ for feedback elimination on the main output is we're doing that to every channel. And mm. we could expect it would be very different for a lav as opposed to an ear set, as opposed to a handheld. Uh, and we certainly don't want to cut those frequencies from our main music output. So the ability to EQ input separately, I think, is critically important. Definitely. I can see that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, here again, I wanted to show some options and show some balance. Uh, you can just keep going up the parade. Uh, you know, the, the Soundcraft Studio Live 3 series, uh, fantastic boards. You have the traditional look and feel. You have the multi-track recording. Uh, you have, uh, you know, all the, uh, you have a touch screen. You have all the joy uh, and love of parametrics on each channel and, and, you know, all those kinds of things. But you have a much higher price point. Everything that I pointed out here, very inexpensive. A uh, couple hundred bucks, basically. Sure. Far less than a DJ controller, in fact. So in this uh, particular uh, board that we're looking at, now, of course, there's many XLRs across the top, and those are all mic inputs, correct? They are, absolutely. Now, if a board does not have the ability to switch between a mic and a line, there's a, and I'm probably going to say it wrong, is that a gain, the top, the top gray knob as you go across, right there. Are those all gains and, oops, Pop. Sorry. Yeah. Where would you set that if you were going from bringing a line in to that? I mean, is it, would it be lower? Would it be higher? How would you have? Way, way lower. Okay. Way lower because I'm trying to, you know, get to the bottom of that preamp basically. Uh, and that's that's getting into our discussion about gain structure, right. which I know we still need to have. Uh, yeah, just, but, to, just for a, a quick little, for those wondering and thinking, oh, well, it should be, you know, right in the middle at 12 o'clock. There's going to be times where... No, yeah, no, you won't want it at 12 o'clock. Um, no, it, the, the knob moves for a reason. You know, if there was only one right place, it would just be there. Sure. Uh, so, uh, he, you know, here again, it depends on the level of the incoming signal. And I would expect that gain to change substantially depending on the microphone that, that's being used as well. You know, with these microphones, I might have that gain up towards the middle of that preamp. Uh, if I were trying to cram a line level signal into that mic preamp like we looked in the other example i would right. expect that to be way down there um and if you turn your gain way down uh and and you're still getting too much signal coming in and you've turned your output signal down uh and maybe you just can't do it sure uh, and there's some there's some things that we want to avoid here uh if you're turning your 
uh, gain on your controller way down. Uh, you know, we're bringing ourselves down to the system noise level. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's just not a good idea, which is why I point out different ways to do it. Different yeah. controllers are going to be different. Uh, different mixing boards are going to be different. So I'm not saying that's the way I'd do it. Mm -hmm. But it is a possibility and such. Yeah, absolutely. You just have to manage your gain. Don't overdrive that preamp. Uh, you know, it, don't, don't push it down to where it's noisy. Uh, again, this is uh, just great advertisement for our future gain structure show. <laughs> you know, uh, it's great advertising for something you get for free, right? You there know, you uh, so, but uh you know, bear in mind. And then another nice thing about this uh, board is we have these meters over here, you know, and we can use that to help set up gain. And same thing with that, uh, with the UI, we saw those meters bouncing. That's right. a really good way to, uh, to decide what our input gain trim should be. Yeah, definitely helpful to be able to have that visual as you're putting it together. Uh, so re quick recap, uh, another uh, option here. And uh, another option there. But mm -hmm. I think, again, given the short distance, I'm not worried about those unbalanced cables at all. Uh, don't really see a problem with that. Uh, I'm going to end my screen share and show you one more mixer here. Sure. Uh, if that was just too much to carry or just too much money or whatever. A little sound craft. And now that is a t how many channel? So there you've got two mic preamps, okay. and we still have that low cut. It's fixed at 100 hertz, but it is there. We've got a little three-band EQ. We've got gain trim. We still have an aux send. So there's our aux bus right there. And uh, we have a pan, a left-right little bit, you know, whatever. Maybe we're going to use it. Maybe we don't. We still have some effects built in, which is just crazy how cheap these things are. Um, and then we have our, our level down here, you know. Uh, now... You know, our, our metering and stuff is a little more limited and, you know, I mean, you kind of a whatever you expect sort of thing. But this thing uh, is almost quite literally the same size as my hand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've got a USB here as well. We've got our line level input here. We've got a uh, stereo line input on this channel as well. So we've got all kinds of options for connecting our DJ controller mm -hmm. and a couple microphones and certainly making an improvement. Would I notice a difference between that particular board and the preamps in that, as we, and then as we've been showing some kind of step up boards, is there a big difference in the mic preamps on that, or is it just them getting more of them? There's a difference. Would I, uh, as a novice DJ that has been used to what I'm used to, would I do you think I would be able to pick it up, or is it something that someone with a trained ear would pick up? Somebody with a trained ear would, I think. But let me say this in a way that hopefully isn't offensive. I, I'm, I'm already offended. Thank you. Good. All right. Mission accomplished. Uh, with what I've seen with many DJ systems, that's not something I would worry about a lot. Uh, I, I think there are other places that, you know, sometimes the, sometimes the rest of the stuff DJs are using, um, you know, the speakers and things, you're not going to notice the preamp. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm not trying to be insulting, uh, but I'm just saying that, it maybe isn't something that matters as much. I get that. Uh, certainly there's a, there's a difference and there's a benefit uh, and you can keep on going. Uh, but I, 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 I think it's still going to be an improvement over what they have currently. Uh, I think there's real reasons to go into the little bit bigger boards, uh, but it's not, it's not my show, you know, it's not for me to say, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I use touring class consoles and I think that gives you sort of a, an unfair perspective maybe. And, and so I try to remind myself, uh, you know, who, who the target audience for the show is. And I think we're still helping a lot of good DJs make better decisions. You know, uh, I, I'm not the kind of guy who's judgmental, who's going to come say, well, if you're not using a touring class console, because that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's just lunacy. You know, no DJ in the world wants to go use a $50,000 or $100,000 mixing board, uh, you know, unless you just won the lottery, you know. So I think using a mixing board that's a couple hundred bucks does make a substantial benefit. And and I'm not going to judge you. I'll applaud you for using it. I think that's a great step in the right direction. Yeah. You know, now that said, you know, uh once you once you drive a Ferrari, 
it's hard to sit behind the wheel of a Ford Focus and feel as good about it, you know, but I own some of these little boards myself. And for, you know, some corporate conference work, uh, we've got a whole fleet of like Soundcraft Signature 12s, you know, which is an inexpensive board. It's a few hundred bucks. Works great for corporate AV kind of things. Uh, have the right rig for the gig, right? You know, you don't, I don't always need to bring out, you know, a Digico, uh, you know, just like I don't always need to bring out a line array, you know, Certainly. just bring out the right tools for the application. Wonderful. And I just want to say, because if you're watching this show, you're already, you're already aces in my book. You obviously care about what you're doing and you're obviously trying to make an improvement in your business. So, uh, you know, I love the fact that you come here. I love the fact that you ask questions. Uh, you know, it, it irritates me to no end, the people who go on a forum to ask for help and they just get flogged by people who think they're better than you. Uh, I'm not one of those people, <laughs> you know, I'm not one of those people at all. And I think, you know, that or you wouldn't be watching the show. And that's my point is just cause you see a pro using a million dollar rig doesn't mean that's what you need to do. Yep. You need to have the right thing for your business. It's going to help your sound improve and, and you're going to still be able to put some money in your pocket and run your business profitably. And that's why I brought inexpensive solutions cause they're going to make a big improvement. Yes. So there you go, John. That was a really long answer to will I notice the difference in preamps? Yeah, that was kind of a long answer. I, I actually took a nap during that. I, I think, I I think I, most people did. I think I ordered some pizza. It should be here any minute now. Kind of well, I tell you what, I, you know, you you want to start a fight, go to a sound a sound guy convention and ask about preamps. You know, uh, boy, I tell you, you know, you could get into, I mean, particularly studio guys. I mean, live sound is really just pretty much nonstop damage control. But, you know, studio guys where they have the ability to choose, you know, two pre's and all those kinds of things. And they just they just go nuts over that. And I got some really good friends that are studio engineers. I'm not knocking them, but they're, but they're nuts. You know, they just they, they live <laughs> in a world. That, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. OK, we're going to get into some questions and such now. Um, Jared just popped one up. It, it actually popped up for me here. Uh, does the Soundcraft UI 16 interface work off a dedicated app or a web-based interface web-based interface okay jared don't know what we're, we're meaning by that and for some of you may yeah. not know that's actually what i actually know you know what they yeah. know what it means my understanding is all three of them ui 12 ui 16 and ui 24 are um all have the os basically built in you just need a web browser that's uh that is my understanding. And then it's just an IP address they enter in and then they can access the yeah, bang, you know, right you're, you're off to the races. So I would do that, except I happen to be using my web to broadcast this show. Where is that? I would yeah. demonstrate it, but I think my computer would get angry. That would be a bad. Yes. The two don't go together. Computer uh, and I are already uh, barely on speaking terms. So, Chris, you know. Chris on Facebook mentions that uh, this, this helped a lot. He never thought about using his, his uh, little uh, live mixer for uh, the microphones. Uh, if anyone give it a whirl, you know, give it a whirl, man. Uh, like I said, treat your microphones different from your DJ content. I think you're going to be uh, extraordinarily happy with the results. Might take a little bit of change in your workflow if you're using things like duckers and whatever. Uh, but I, boy, I think, I think you're going to be really impressed with the results. And remember, low cut everything. See, this sounds like a video that I'm going to have to work on later this week where I'm going to hook up my controller and run one mic into that and then hook up the board and then run things through and, see how it all sounds well and you know here's the punchline: if it sounds good it is good if you're happy with the results you're getting do it your way <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm gonna sleep good at night doesn't matter to me could it be better uh, though that's the thing is you always want to have a a better sound because you would you, the last thing i ever want to hear from a client is that oh you know it sounded distorted scratchy it, it, this whatever you know i couldn't hear the microphones those are things that just irk me because i know what the technology and the ability that we have that you can't it can be done it's just you know it, it matters i'll I tell you what it matters and people say well the sound doesn't matter you know it depends on the the mc this and that no no it matters and here's why and i had this great discussion with our mutual friend bill herman who surprisingly despite the fact that i nearly electrocuted him at mobile beat a couple of years ago publicly uh He's actually going to be doing the opening keynote for our lighting symposium. I, I was stunned he, that he agreed to do that. I heard he was going to be talking about electrocution and how to handle such things. Well, I still have the box. Uh, so who knows? Uh, but Bill and I had this great discussion one time 
and and he obviously he and Jason have that great you know uh, performance uh, you know clinic they put on, and they talk about how to make you a better performer, which mm-hmm. is important. Okay, it's not all about gear; it's not all about performance. There's a marriage of the two, and Bill and I had that discussion, and I said, you know, Bill, let me argue for a second to, on on the advocacy of of good gear and knowing how gear works. I said, you spend all this time and money becoming a better performer, and and you spend all this energy being a better performer, but something is just a little off with the audio that takes away from your performance. By far. Even if just mm-hmm. subconsciously the listener can't help but think something's not right. Mm-hmm. Something doesn't sound good. Something is bothering my brain. Even if they don't even know they're thinking it, believe me, it matters. So absolutely. You know why? I mean, do it all. And listen, don't just fix your gear. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say, well, if you fix your gear, you know, you're good. Yeah. It, it, it takes it all, you know, mm-hmm. It takes it all. That's why that's why professional singers have professional sound engineers. They need to get it to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Uh, let's see. Can you show a quick gain structure? Uh, DJ Cox, we're going to do a great... We're, the gain structure is actually something... Um, I've got to talk to Ben. There's going to be a situation in about two weeks where he's going to be in a location where it might be a great spot to uh, talk about that. So we'll, gain structure will be down the road. Um, is there a rack mount mixer you would recommend with effects and a remote app? UI 16. Uh, it's probably a bit overkill, but it is rack mountable. Uh, you could, you know, you could make this UI 12 rack mountable with some doing, but the UI 16 comes rack mountable. And, uh, uh, it, I mean, it, you know, gosh, again, even though it's overkill, it's not a ton of money and a uh, great little mixer uh, for the uh, bang for the buck. There's other options too. send me a message and I'll, I'll give you some options and some pricing. Uh, there's a couple of questions here dealing with uh, lag. Uh, Jared asked the question about uh, if you notice any type of lag or delay in the interface from between what the interface is seeing and what's actually being heard. Yeah, sometimes, you know, there, there, there can be times, uh, it might be tough to uh, to do things like a like a tap tempo or something there, uh, but for what we're doing here, it's probably not that big a deal. You know, just again, don't get crazy with the EQ and start grabbing things and yanking them around. Uh, you know, until you hear what's going on. Little changes, little mistakes, right? That's so that's the idea. yeah, there can be some latency. Uh, you know, because it's a wireless connection, and sometimes your computer is doing its thing, and you know, and whatnot. Uh, but but you know, here again, just a little dose of reality. We're talking about a mixing board with eight preamps uh, and aux buses and built-in effects and, and dynamics that uh, is a couple hundred bucks. I think the dust cover for my mixing board costs more than uh, that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, just we just got to be honest with ourselves. A little lag, we can live with that, right? You know, if it happens. Um, let's see. Uh, why is there delay from my microphone to my speaker, and how can I fix that? And of course, I notice this many times when I'm in a longer room and I'm doing MC halfway down the room. Well, I don't know if you're talking about the same scenario they are. I would need to know more about their example. But John, in your case, uh, the delay is the speed of sound. You know, speed of yep. sound is only 1,128 feet per second, basically, uh, at at uh, you know room temperature and relative general humidity. You know that we typically find in rooms. And to put that in perspective, 1,128 feet per second, as opposed to 984 million feet per second is the speed of light. Uh, that's that sound. It's not the radio waves from your uh, microphone. They're traveling at the speed of light. Uh, it's not the speed of the electricity going to the speaker or anything like that. That's also traveling at the speed of light pretty close. It's that slow speed of sound. Uh, hardest example I can think of is national anthem singers on football fields that are five, 600 feet away from the loudspeaker sometimes. And oh, that yeah. delay is huge. You just have to not even listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if, the, if the viewer is talking about something different, because uh, there's, no, there's no fix for that. What yeah. you're talking about, there's no fix for that. It's just physics, you know, just, just live with it. Uh, if they have a latency issue within their system, something's wrong. You know, it could be an ADDA conversion thing, but should never be anything that's... Uh, you know, a perceptible latency. We, we have to, you know, be very conscious of that in touring situations because of sound going to monitors and whatnot. Yes. Uh, you know, we can't, we have to keep those latencies very, very short, you know, uh, nothing perceptible for sure. So uh, I'd need to know more about your specific, specific scenario. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
Any tips for feedback destroyers? Don't use them. Just just get a decent mixer with a you know parametric EQ. Knock out what you need, nothing more. Uh, feedback destroyers are uh, they're 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 a crutch that compromises the overall sound of your whole system. You know, and again, I'm not judging people who use them, but that's my advice: is you don't need it. Uh, for what you will spend on a feedback destroyer, you can get one of these mixers and do just as good a job. In fact, you'll do a better job. And here's mm -hmm. why. Music has long hanging notes. Feedback destroyers use algorithms to try to figure out what's feedback and what's not. It has to basically listen until it hears feedback before it can squash that. Now, before the gig, you can go in there and you can set up fixed filters where you go make your system feedback and you make a lot of friends in the convention center or the yep. ballroom. You know, yes. the wait staff loves you because uh, you're screeching all over the place. But the feedback eliminator basically says, okay, that, that frequency is a problem. And, and all it does is just exactly what we would do on this system with an EQ. And it goes, whoop, and it drops that down a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, the, so there's your fixed filters, and you've taken that out of all your main program material and everything. Now, if we talk about live filters, something that you are counting on to help you in the middle of a gig, feedback has to happen at a perceptibly loud and long enough level for that filter to pick it up the yeah. algorithm to identify it and then hammer it. I'm much faster than that thing. And, and, and I know you're like, okay, yeah, well, good for you, Ben. You're a touring sound guy. You can be much faster too. You could say, Hey, I'm that fast. sound is not supposed to be there. You know, that sound is not part of the music and it's not part of the person speaking and I can eliminate it right away. And you can piece of cake, super easy. So there's my advice on feedback. We we have a great show we did on feedback elimination um, years ago. Yeah, it's it's in the if you guys go out to uh, djntv.com, you can go to the Ben Stowe, the Tuesday night with Ben Stowe playlist and all the shows are there and you can search free and boom it'll pop it right up that's a pretty good bargain you, I, mean, I mean free <laughs> well it is more expensive than some other things but <laughs> and I, and i'll tell you what nothing's changed you know as far as that feedback elimination show i don't remember what all we said but i can't think of anything that would change my mind in the last two years we so. are just about out of time here but i do have uh jared's jared's i think ready to buy one of these u uh, ui 16s uh he's wondering if, if profiles can be saved in that uh, when you can set up a profile on the board and save it. I would be stunned if you can't. I know you can save user presets. I'm sure you can save, uh, you know, for like like channels, you can say this is my, you know, uh, this is my beta 58 microphone preset. You can save that, whatever. I'm sure you can save scenes and that sort of thing. I would be stunned if you can't. Uh, I haven't used one enough on a, on a in-depth level to tell you, but I, I guarantee it. I'll look later. I just... If not, I'm going to send a strongly worded email to Soundcraft because that would be a very necessary feature in my book. <laughs> I would think so. Uh, yeah. Last question here. Dan has, um, or actually, no, I was one up here, and it, we're going to tie these two together. Uh, Message me later, Jared, and we'll talk about that. So, uh, I, I, yeah. Feedback. Uh, is there generally, what are some of the, and I'm going to change uh, DJ Cox's question is a little bit. For feedback, are there some frequencies that are more apt to feedback than others? And then, uh, and then of course, Dan asked about which frequency to drop. So these two kind of coincide. So... Are, are we going to find feedback somewhere along that spectrum more often than not? Drop the one that's feeding back. And uh, that would be typically which one? It depends. Really? It, it's going to oh. depend on so many things. It's going to depend on your microphone. It's going to depend on the microphone placement. It's going to depend on the loudspeaker you're using. It's going to depend on the room. Uh, I, I would love to tell you, you know, this is where you're going to find a problem, but I can't. Uh, I can tell you that there are some apps out there you can use to train your ears to frequencies, but there are also some apps you can use to, uh, to just basically look. And in fact, uh, let me see if I can do this without uh, getting us into real trouble here uh, with the noise coming from the phone. I'm going to fire up. Uh, I, this is not an app. Maybe I would, I would uh, recommend for a DJ uh, unless you just got money burning a hole in your pocket. There's probably cheaper ones or free ones that would do an adequate job. Uh, this is uh, called smart uh, and this is smart for mobile. So John, I've got a challenge for you now. I want you to give this to try. I want you to whistle like a consistent tone. All right. And we'll see what, what shows up here on this. Okay, we'll try. Okay. We see that spike right there where John was whistling. Yep. And we also see, we also see this stripe. Come back. Okay. 
So, John, I'm going to have you do it again, and you're going to see a you're going to see a very pronounced spike, and then okay. you're also going to see a stripe where this gives you basically some time on the spectral trace where it says, "Hey, look here, that's the problem." Okay, so John, uh, batter up. This Hang is on. fun to make you do this, by the okay. way. Okay. <laughs> now I'm not. <laughs> now you can't. Now I can. Okay. Yeah, now I'm going to be not be able to do it, but it still shows. All right, and so. Your, yours is at about 1.3K, give or take 1.4K. So if that was your feedback, uh, we would just go in and put a little filter in at like 1.3, 1.4. Uh, and, and here again, uh, on a parametric EQ on something like the UI, very easy to go in and very precisely dial that in. Uh, maybe on something like this, where our choices are 800 or 2.5, uh, we might have to kind of just try a little bit of one or the other, you know, say, well, eh, maybe I'll take a little of both, you know, yeah. uh, we just, we got to sort of get close, kind of like hunting, hunting flies with a bazooka, but um, really again, it's that. still better than doing it on your main output. Even if we're taking a bunch of that vocal out to try to find the problem child, it's still better than doing it on your main output because we didn't take it out of any other mics and we didn't take it out of the music. Uh, yeah. best of course to be able to go in uh, and just put a very precise little notch and problem solved and that's what i did uh in in vegas by the way i put one little bitty notch uh about 4 db and that microphone was stable in front of that speaker now if somebody was actually using it and roaming around i'd probably have a little more work to do uh but it it wouldn't be much and the fact is we had an open mic at a usable level one foot from a loudspeaker and it wasn't feeding back awesome I think that is it. We need to wrap things up because Brian Red is up next. Ben, great information, and he, he is much more entertaining than I am. So. Well, and now I'm now I want to go. I, I, now I was thinking at first because I, I wanted to wait until after this show because after you mentioned the preamp thing, and it's like okay, I need to get aboard to go into the system because I want to have two to four microphones, good quality mic inputs. And at first, I was thinking something similar to the initial or the second unit you showed us. But now I'm starting to glean back towards that digital option where you can actually contour at such a high level. Oh, decisions. I'm telling you, for what you for what you spend and what you get, they're they're dynamite little units. I mean, I, I realize, my, you know, my job is to run a company that sells gear. I get that, but I'll tell you, this is just one of those things where I'm not saying this to sell gear. It's it's such a such a fantastic solution for the money, mm -hmm. uh, man. I, I I saw people spend a lot more than that at Vegas uh, just going out one night. You know? Yeah, and that's another story for <laughs> we'll have to have it for another time. Ben, that's another you. show. Yeah, yeah man, that's a, that's a Brian Red show. That's a Brian. <laughs> that's the next show, which has absolutely no educational content. Coming up next on our second show tonight, Ben. Thank you very much. We will be back and catch you. Well, actually, next week's our, our our hangout week, so we'll have to talk about what we're doing for next week. So, gang, we'll be back in about All five right. minutes with Brian Red. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice. DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insider.